Welcome to an exciting journey where we're going to talk about God's kingdom and how He wants to expand His presence on earth. We're going to talk about how uniquely God had made you and where you also fit into His plan. We also want to urge you to use your daily journal for the next five weeks to discover the areas where you can grow in your life and in your leadership. Now today we're going to talk about the concept of the four chapter gospel. And when we speak about the completed work of Christ, we need to understand the importance of this following statement. Jesus has done it all in the fullest. And what he has done is final. The question is, what did he do? To what extent did he do it? What does Jesus' statement, it is done on the cross, mean? Now we should be able to answer these questions with a clear understanding of the gospel. See, we tend to assume the understanding of the gospel in three chapters. Chapter 1, sin entered the world. Chapter 2, at the cross, Jesus Christ died for our sin. And chapter 3, because of this, He has forgiven us and given us salvation so we can go to heaven. But can I ask you this? Isn't there more to life than just running back and asking Jesus again and again forgiveness so that we can secure our spot in heaven? Couldn't there be more to the gospel than just these three chapters? Well, let's go through the story of the gospel. Chapter 1, we find in Genesis 1 in the creation story. In verse 26, God says, Then let us make mankind in our image and our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, over the livestock, and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created the male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth, subdue it. God saw that all he had made and it was very good. We see even in Genesis 1 verse 1 to 25 that there's a God and this God creates everything. Every time he creates, he also says that it is good. Thus from the foundation of the earth to the very intricate detail of existence of all things we learn that everything is good god created the earth and man and said it is good that man should rule over this good creation you see man gets the responsibility to take control over what god has made to rule over it and cultivate it you and i we've received this responsibility to take care of what is good creation and everything in it is good and God blessed us meaning he gave us everything we need to make it possible for us to rule the earth the main reason why we were given this responsibility is because God has put his image and likeness in us so that we can reveal him and action his will on earth you see we represent God on earth image and likeness but chapter 2 we we, we see it in Genesis 3 where the fall of man happens. Man gets tempted and sins against the will of God, not by just eating the fruit, but by forgetting how God has created him and what man's real purpose is. You see, we need to understand the issue of eating the fruit. The enemy offered Adam and Eve a means for them to become like God, knowing good and evil. How many times might this have happened in your life? You might have thought or said the following that's almost the same as eating the food. I've decided that this is what I would like to do. This is who I am. I'm in control of my own life. I want it, I'll have it. No one tells me who I am or what I'm supposed to do. Let me ask you this. How has that worked out for you? How many times have you might have felt guilt about who you are or who you've become in life? Or how many times have you felt shame of the things that you've done in the past? I want to ask you something very personal. Have you ever asked yourself the question, why are you still struggling with these things? Read along with me. Paul writes in Romans 5 verse 12, it says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. Adam's action to have taken the fruit, taken the option of wanting to be his own God, control of his own life, caused a curse to come upon all of man 
And this also had an effect on earth. We tend not to focus on the effect the fall had on earth, rather a lot on the distance between God and man. But when we refer to the fall, we see not only a distance that came between God and man, but earth also experienced a decay. We see in Genesis 3 verse 17 that through man's actions, the earth was also cursed. Because man no longer ruled with God on earth, but ruled from himself, the earth entered into state of decay. We see the decay of earth when there is pretty much no leadership or there's a lack of kingdom principles in society. Now, fortunately, a redemption plan was in place. This brings us to chapter three, which is the cross. Right? The third chapter is all about God's redemptive plan for all lives because of one reason and that is His love for us. John 3 verse 16 to 17 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whomever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through Him. See, Jesus was sent to die on the cross so that we don't need to live with that guilt and that shame of being our own gods or taking control of our own lives. Jesus brought us forgiveness and came to give us personal salvation. The thing is, when this happens, we tend to wish that God should just take us to heaven immediately after He has forgiven us because it's just too difficult to live a holy life on earth, right? But we obviously know God doesn't do this. But the question is, why? Why doesn't God do this? You see, God sent Jesus not just to forgive us, but to do something even greater, to give us a restored life. We need to understand that if we are in Christ Jesus, we are no longer sinners. We are no longer subjected to the influence of Adam's sin and the curse. We are now made righteous because of Jesus' righteous act on the cross. Meaning that we are no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer called sinners. We are rather restored to being the image and likeness of God on earth again. This brings us to chapter 4 of the gospel, a restored earth. God didn't save us just to get us into heaven. God saved us that we can live a restored life and also play a part in his restoration plan for all creation. Romans 6 teaches us that we are included in Jesus' death, his burial and his resurrection and ascension into heaven. Thus meaning we are the representatives, the co-heirs, the ambassadors of Christ or of God on earth made righteous because of Jesus and we no longer are under the curse that Adam brought into this world. Just listen how Paul explains this in Colossians 1 verse 15 to 20. He says, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together, and He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything He might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all His fullness dwell in Him, and through Him to Himself reconcile all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through His blood shed on the cross wow in the beginning after god created all things god said that it was very good the curse brought damage to creation but jesus didn't just reconcile us to him so that we can go back to heaven he reconciled all things god's original plan and design for all things is still the same In Jesus Christ, we still have the responsibility to take the message of the reconciliation plan of God to the world. When we understand who we truly are 
and we know why we are on earth. We don't fall for the feeble temptations of this world as it doesn't serve us or our calling as agents of this restorative plan that God has for man and earth. John 17 verse 15 to 18, Jesus pray, prays this prayer. He says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. Jesus, he prays that we should be sent into the world and not be taken out of it. We are called to again subdue the earth, to be representatives of God on earth and to bring restoration to what is broken. See, when we realize that God not only saved us to be reconciled to Him, but He saved us that He reconciled all things to Him, we can all live from a place of victory in Jesus Christ. My question to you is, what would it look like if God's will and His way take shape within families? What would it look like if God's kingdom's principles are lived out in our workplaces? What would it look like if an army would rise up and bring God's presence into every facet of society. I want you to discuss these three questions within your group and enjoy the rest of the series.